Welcome back. We are on part two of our language module, and this time I thought I'd dress up, put my detective hat on, because I'm searching for a word that I can't remember. I know I know what the word is, and you know, you know, if I could ask you, I would probably say it's a word. It's like these words, but it's not that one. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Sometimes I do this whenever a word is on the tip of my tongue and I can't quite get it out. Have you ever had that experience? It's called the tip of the tongue phenomena. And it's something that is studied in language cognition research. So we're gonna take a look at an example of this kind of research in this paper that was published in the journal Cognition from the year 2019, so it's pretty recent. The title of the paper is Tip of the Tongue After Any Language, Reintroducing the Notion of Blocked Retrieval. This video, I'm gonna to try to keep it short, five to 10 minutes. You can get this paper off of Blackboard. There will be quiz questions about this paper. So go ahead and give it a quick read. It's not terribly long. And you could use this video as a kind of Cole's Notes, a short version of the paper. So let's scan through it real quick and then dive into the details. So if you were to scan through this paper, you would see that we've got an abstract, the introductions about a page and a half. Then we're right into the details of the experiment with the methods, materials, procedure. There's some tables. If we scroll, oh, we see there's two experiments and there's a really nice figure here. We'll get to this in a moment. And it ends off with a discussion, a little bit more analysis and some conclusions. The last two pages are references and an appendix. So this shouldn't take terribly long to read. I suggest that we start off with the abstract. It does a great job of giving us a bird's eye view of this whole thing. So once we do that, we'll jump into the results section and take a look at what they found. I'm going to zoom in right up to the abstract here. See if I can focus it a bit more than that. Okay, so the abstract. I'm going to read through this and then do a little bit of commentary on it. Tip of the tongue, they have TOT for that, that's an acronym, states, uh, oh, tip of the tongue states often entail a phenomenological sense that retrieval is blocked. Now, I, I feel that way. When I'm trying to remember a word, it literally feels like something's stopping me from getting that word out. And I think that's what they're referring to, that feeling like the word wants to pop out. You know you know what it is, but it's just being prevented, something stopping it from entering your conscious awareness. So this is a kind of idea about how tip of the tongue might work. Maybe something is blocking the word from entering your consciousness. They point out that incomplete activation is a more commonly assumed underlying mechanism. So there could be other reasons why you have this feeling. Um, maybe the word you're trying to remember is not activated strongly enough. You could somehow activate it more strongly. There's nothing blocking it. It just needs a little bit more juice and then it will pop into your consciousness. So at the beginning of the abstract, they're pointing out there's these different ways of thinking about why tip of the tongue states are occurring. What they're going to do in this paper is uh, produce some empirical evidence that could help shed light on these ideas. But first of all, they note some recent findings from the literature. Let me point out something I didn't actually know before. That is, bilinguals have more tip of the tongues than monolinguals. So that's interesting. If you speak more than one language, maybe you've had this experience uh, that you have a lot of tip of the tongue states. What's interesting is that uh, bilinguals commonly report that one language feels less accessible after immersion in another. So I don't speak two languages uh, very well. I can't really comment on this, but I, I suppose the idea is if I, let's say, could speak Spanish very well. I've, I've tried, but I speak it very poorly. 
But if I was spending some time speaking Spanish, then I would be immersed in the Spanish environment of language. And when I went to speak some English words, I would then suffer more tip of the tongue effects uh, from having switched the language as I was using. So that's an interesting uh, suggestion. Apparently there's some evidence for this from this paper published in 2015. Those authors reported that Russian Hebrew bilinguals had more tip of the tongues for Hebrew words after watching a movie in Russian. It's interesting. And this is, this is surprising. Surprisingly, native Hebrew speakers who did not know Russian also had more tots. Hmm. The paper that we're going to read right here has a similar design. Instead of uh, Russian Hebrew bilinguals, this paper had 72 Spanish English bilinguals and 72 monolinguals. And I think the monolinguals here could only speak English. They couldn't speak Spanish when the bilinguals could speak Spanish and English. What they did was they had everybody watch a Spanish movie. All right. This is a way to immerse all the participants in a Spanish language environment. Now, remember, half the participants can speak Spanish, so they're watching the movie and they speak Spanish and they understand what's going on in the movie. The other half of the participants don't speak Spanish and they're watching the movie, too. The question in the research is, after being immersed in the Spanish language environment for this short period of time, if you were then to switch back to having to do something in English, would you have more tip of the tongue states than, than you otherwise would? So that's what they're going to do. They, they actually found evidence for this in their first experiment for both bilinguals and monolinguals, and we'll take a look at that. In their second experiment, they're following up on their manipulation. And I think this is a good time probably to jump into the methods just to get a better sense of what happened. So we have these two groups of people, 72 Spanish English bilinguals, 72 monolinguals. At the very beginning of the experiment, what happened was everybody looked at pictures that uh, were, were taken of common objects and they had to name the picture as fast as they could. All right, so you see a picture of something, say that's a stapler. See a picture of something, it's like that's a plant. See another picture, that's a chair or whatever they are. This procedure is known to generate tip of the tongue states sometimes. So sometimes you'll see a picture and you'll be like, oh, I know, I know, like, I know, I know what that thing is, but I just can't bring the word up. So what they were doing was measuring. Uh, you could read it a little bit more here. After the person named the picture, they had people answer a question. There was five different response types. One was uh, called the GOT response type. This means that you totally got the word correct and you knew that. Uh, another one was the TOT. And this was, uh, hold on, sorry, moving a little bit too quickly. It's actually better to read what the authors are saying right here. This does a nice job of describing what happens. So participants were told what a TOT is and they were presented with pictures one at a time on the computer screen and instructed to name the picture or say, I don't know, or say taught. So if they know what the name is, boom, you just say it. They might not know, or they might have that feeling like, I know, I know what it is. I just can't say what the name is. So they're measuring how many times people have this taught experience. Then everybody watches the Spanish movie. And after the movie's over, they do this picture naming task again. The picture naming task is always in English. So they were able to measure 
the proportion of taught experiences before watching the Spanish movie and after watching the Spanish movie. The idea is potentially the number of tip of the tongue experiences will go up after watching a movie in Spanish. Here's the data. It's basically exactly what they found. Let's focus in on the data for experiment one. All right, so what are we looking at? We're looking at proportion of tots or proportion tip of the tongue experiences. Now, we've got a gray bar and a black bar. These ones right here are for the first experiment. So let's just focus on these two right here. This is this gray bar is the before condition and the black bar is the after condition. And we're looking at the group of Spanish bilinguals. Okay, so let's do a little play by play. The Spanish bilinguals come into the experiment. They do the picture naming task and the researchers measure the proportion of tip of the tongue experiences that they have. And the average proportion was this number right here. That looks like about a 0.11 or 0.10 or something. That's 0.10. It's like 11% uh, tip of the tongue experiences. Then they watch the movie in Spanish. And after that, they do the picture naming again. So what happened to the proportion of tip of the tongue experiences after watching a movie in Spanish? It goes up. People had more tip of the tongue experiences after watching that Spanish movie. If we're just focusing on this data point right here, we can consider one of the hypotheses the authors put forward that when Spanish bilinguals watch a movie in Spanish and then switch to doing an English language type of task, one possibility is that having a brief immersive experience in one language causes some suppression or blocks uh, word accessibility in the other language. And if that was going on, then you'd find something exactly like this, that Spanish speakers, after watching a little bit of Spanish TV, would uh, have worse accessibility for English words as measured by an increase in the number of tip of the tongue experiences they're having. So this data point is consistent with that idea. What's curious and interesting here is the same pattern was found for the monolingual group. The monolingual group didn't speak Spanish. Before they watched the movie, they had about 8% tip of the tongue experiences. Then they watched a Spanish movie. And remember, they don't speak Spanish, so none of the words would make sense. After the movie, they uh, also show an increase in the number of tip of the tongue experiences. And that's, you know, <laughs> It's a bit confusing because these monolinguals don't speak Spanish. So it, the hypothesis that their uh, Spanish language processes are suppressing word accessibility for their English speaking processes seems like it wouldn't do a very good job of explaining why the tip of the tongue is increasing here. Experiment two is conducted to, to try to establish some control conditions. And they produce some really interesting data. Let's look at the second experiment here. And I'll tell you about each of the manipulations as we go along. So everything was fairly similar. All of the participants in the second experiment were monolingual speakers of English. All right. In this group, participants named pictures, and then they had about, I guess, 5% tip of the tongue experiences. Then they watched a movie in Russian. 
they don't speak Russian. After the movie, they found an increase of tip of the tongue experiences for the picture naming task. So this was a kind of extension of their previous work uh, from experiment one, where the movie was in Spanish. This time it's in Russian. They had another type of movie that could have been played. This one was a ASL movie. And they also had a movie that was Spanish with subtitles. So in all three of these cases, after watching that movie that involved some auditory language experience, or let's say immersion in an experience with another language that you don't speak, tip of the tongues in the primary or in the English language task did increase. These last two conditions were control conditions. One of them was playing Tetris. So here, you don't watch a movie. You, you don't get an immersive experience with a language that you don't know. You just play Tetris in between doing the picture naming task the first time and then doing it the second time. They found no difference in the tip of the tongue phenomenon. I think this is an important control condition because it's possible that, well, if you just do the picture naming task for a while, and then you do something else, and then you do it again, you might just always get a little bit more tip of the tongue the second time. But they didn't find that. They also had another interesting control condition called copy move. In this one, participants again watched the Spanish movie. However, the uh, there was no subtitles and the, the dialogue was turned off. And participants were instructed to try to mirror the movements of the actors in the movie. And this would not engage the participant in an immersive language experience, but it would be a nice control condition for trying to like, I guess, make sense of what's going on in the movie and interacting with the movie. And here, no increase in the tip of the tongue was observed. So taken together, it seems like uh, we have some interesting evidence that regardless of whether you speak a language or not, if you have an immersive experience uh, listening to that language for about 10 minutes, that could have some consequences for you experiencing the tip of the tongue phenomena in your primary language. So pretty interesting. That is a paper from 2019 on the topic of the tip of the tongue. So maybe I'll try this at home myself. I should go listen to some stuff that I don't understand from a different language. And um, maybe I'll try recording one of these videos and see if I have problems talking because I think I get tip of the tongue all the time, to be honest. Anyways, that's this paper. And we'll see you next time for the last learning module on judgment and decision making. That'll be coming out as soon as I can make it.